Okay. I'm always just a little late or just a little unprepared. Just like in my life. So markets are down <clears throat> a lot. Hey, Anya. Good morning. I'm four minutes late. <laughs> I'm just pulling up all the websites I use. It's Market Watch, Seeking Alpha, Tip Ranks, CNBC just for headlines, and um, I think that's it. Oh, and I'll pull up the Instagram uh, Earnings Whisper account that I follow. Anya, thank you for the heart. Okay, so today's a big day because we had CPI data, that's core, or that's uh, consumer price index that came out this morning. Inflation, hello, kind-hearted. Inflation a little higher uh, than expected, so the markets are really overreacting and selling off like crazy. Um, the picture on CNBC is of a guy on the floor going like this. <laughs> um, it's So <clears throat> the headline here says... Um, Stocks dropped on Tuesday after hotter than expected inflation data. So went up a little bit more instead of going down like what we all like we all want. Um, but they're really blaming it on housing. And I've definitely noticed MJ's got it in the comments. Funny enough, your comment was flagged. I'm unflagging it. Um, but MJ says, hey, Ken, dollar cost averaging day. You got it. That's exactly what I'm doing today. I'm looking at my portfolio and I'm going, all right, what is down? Where did my, where did my thing go? Here it is. Um, what is down a lot that I would consider averaging into? Um, NVIDIA is down $10, so it's only 1% down. It's not like huge. Um, but the markets are down 521 points or 1.34%. So a pretty big sell-off on the markets today. Coinbase is down almost $8. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Arc, the ARC fund is down a couple bucks. Tesla is down a couple bucks. Everything's really getting hammered today. Um, the only thing, the, the only thing funny enough that is up this morning in my portfolio is Procter and Gamble. Um, earnings today is going to be a, another big day. Actually, this is the biggest day of the week, in my opinion, for earnings. Um, uh, Shopify was out this morning. Coca-Cola was out this morning. Airbnb is out when the market closes. Upstart, Robinhood, and Lyft also when the markets close today. And Instacart and Zillow towards the bottom, but they're still somewhat important because, um, it'll show us housing information and in online shopping if people are still getting their groceries and using a service like Instacart or if most people have just returned to the stores. CPI went up. <clears throat> um, it is 3.9 versus 3.7 was the estimate. Um, <clears throat> Good morning. Hi, how are you? Good morning. Good morning. Make sure also that you guys are smacking that screen a whole bunch. It just brings in a lot more traffic. Um, there are a lot of people in here, 552 people. Good morning to all 552 of you who want to learn how to invest, trade stocks, or live below your means. You're in the right place. The world's most interesting man, Voss. Voss? Like the water? I'm not sure what Voss is. I don't see anything Voss. I see Vosaya AG. It's a foreign company. V-O-S-S-F or V-O-S-S-Y. I'm not sure what either one of those are. Another Kenneth. Hello. Hi. My opinion on Bitcoin right now. Uh, well, let's see what Bitcoin is doing first. It was, it was like hitting, um, it went up a lot yesterday. It, it used to be that when, when like inflation was out of control or, or um, people were worried about an economy a recession or something like that, something economic, that Bitcoin would do really well because people saw it as the alternative and the safer investment. Now that all these massive hedge funds have a stake in it, I'm not sure that's so true anymore, but I'm not really the crypto expert. Um, it is 48,000 right now. I think last night it hit 40. Let's see here. It hit like 49,000 last night because my crypto.com app was like buzzing. <clears throat> um, what's your opinion on... Oh, okay. <laughs> Bitcoin. Um, I like it. I'm going to hold it for a very long time. I saw a video yesterday where this guy said that he was going to sell 90% of his Bitcoin. Um, and everyone in the comments was like losing their minds. But he was a trader. He's a like a stock trader, but for crypto. He's a crypto trader. 
And he was like, I'm up huge. I bought it at like 18. Now it's 50. And I bought a lot with the purpose of a quick flip. I've had my quick flip. I'm out. Tesla. <laughs> Tesla is the number one question I get. I get asked about Tesla. At least this is the first time I've been asked on the live. I should keep a tally. I should keep a tally. Let's keep a tally. I'm going to say Tesla mentions one. We've got one mention on Tesla. I can't tell you whether you should buy it or not. I'm not a financial advisor and I'm not your financial advisor. I'm just a guy on TikTok. Um, Tesla has gotten hammered pretty hard over the last year. Um, Let's see here. Year to date, Tesla is down 25%. Keep in mind, though, that it's also still $185 per share, and it still is a little bit overvalued when you compare it to the overall sector. So the overall sector has a price-to-earnings ratio of 16, and Tesla is 58. It still is overvalued, even though it's fallen a lot. That means it could fall more, or it might skyrocket and go back up. Nobody knows. Um, I wonder, you know, Tesla's going to be one of those companies that was innovative in the beginning because they were one of the first electric car companies on the planet. As soon as they came in and as soon as it started to be profitable, more companies were like, well, we're going to do this too because we want a share. We want some of that money. Now every car company has an electric vehicle. Um, Kindhearted is done with all niche stocks. I don't blame you. They can be a lot more volatile. Um, John Cop, you are you are the first one to ask about Tesla. We'll see how many more ask in the live. Should be funny. Um, I don't know what Mama is. Oh, let's look at the one year price target for Tesla first and see what the analysts think. And I know analysts aren't mind readers, and th- their price targets are not guaranteed. They're oh, Robin's losing their mind. Um, she's gonna come sprinting through here, barking any second. Or not, guess not. She'll come on the live later and say hi. What is going on with this website? Tip ranks, every time I close the pop-up, another one pops up. Okay, here we go. Tesla's 185. There are 34 analysts covering Tesla stock. Of those 34, and this is this is kind of interesting because anytime I, I look at these one-year price targets from the analysts and there's like a massive amount of analysts covering it, usually it skews one way. Usually it's like overwhelming majority of them say buy it or hold it or sell it. With Tesla, it's a little scattered. Of the 34, five say sell it, 17 say hold it if you already own it, 12 say buy it. So it gets an overall hold rating from these 34 analysts. It has an average price target of 220. The lowest price target is $23. I'm not kidding, $23.53. The highest price target is 345. My concern with Tesla is oversaturation with competitors. Mama, let's take a look at Mama. I don't know, I've never heard of this company. Mama's Creations Incorporated, weird name. Packaged foods and meat. Last year went up 141%, which is a lot. It is a penny stock, so you need to be careful. Penny stocks, new traders and new investors look to penny stocks like this is my ticket to wealth. It's usually your ticket to losing everything. So be really, really careful with how much you put into these stocks. Mama has four analysts covering it. All four say buy it. It has a one-year price target of 750. That's 68% move to the upside. But the fact that there are so few analysts covering it gives me hesitation. Um, But, you know, whatever. It's a penny stock, so it's inherently high risk by nature. I would only put in what I was willing to lose. What's causing the crazy run in NVIDIA ARM and SMCI? I think it's a lot of, like, um, if you remember during COVID when when all of these companies were were offering, like, unique COVID-related things. So there was... um, there was Zoom, like the, or was it Zoom? Yeah, Zoom, the, the phone call thing where you could talk to people. Uh, it was called Zoom, right? I feel like it was called Zoom. Um, you could talk to people. It was like FaceTime, but on your computer. And everyone went nuts for it. They were like, Zoom, it's the future, it's the future. Everyone's going to be s- stuck indoors and we're all going to be using Zoom. And Peloton, the same thing. It's the future. We're all going to be stuck indoors. Buy it, buy it. Etsy, same thing. People are stuck inside, they're bored, they're crocheting, they're making crafts, they're selling them online for side hustles, Russian. It was like hysteria around a collection of these companies, um, Shopify too. Everyone's starting a side hustle. They're all going to Shopify. Ah! And all of these stocks got skyrocketed in price because of COVID and hysteria. And then all of it all died down and everyone came back to earth and all those stocks dropped significantly in price. 
I think the same thing is happening with the semiconductors. It's a lot of hysteria, a lot of excitement. This is the future, this is the future, get it now. And it's causing these massive valuations in these companies, which could come down, or they might just level out, trade sideways, and, and kind of cool down a little bit. I don't think, you know, nothing goes up forever. And I'm, I'm sure that Nvidia is gonna have a day when it dumps pretty hard and it starts to pull back a little bit, just like Tesla is doing now, but nobody knows when. Um, let's see, N NVIDIA hit <clears throat> NVIDIA hit an all-time high of 721 earlier last week, I think. It's now 711, it's down ten dollars. It's gonna be normal to see these these this profit taking that we're seeing in a lot of what you mentioned, um, NVIDIA ARM, SMCI, semiconductors, technology, AI, cloud, artificial intelligence, anything in that sector. People get really carried away, they get really excited, they rush in, then it creates more hysteria, then more people rush in, then the people who bought first are like, oh my God, I'm up three or 400%, I'm out. They take their profits, the stock tanks, then the second investors who got in a little late start freaking out because now they're having sitting on a loss, then they start selling everything, and then the stock just craters. And then it levels off and goes up again over time if we're lucky. Um... Best market advice you can get. If you think you have a, a unique idea, the market already thought it. Yeah. Uh, Anya, thank you for the flowers. Uh, PLTR entry point. I saw you ask about that. Um, let me see here. I'm also going to open my... Robin, relax. dog is losing their mind. Um, I'm just waiting for my, my chart to open up for uh, Thinkorswim so I can look at, at the uh, technical analysis for Palantir. In the meantime, it's up 213%. So you have to think about it like this. It's already had an absolutely massive run. The stock is up 214% in the last 12 months. Year to date, it's up 40%. Uh, in the last six months, it's up 52%. This is a stock that's had massive growth in a very short period of time. Getting in now could mean that you're getting in at the top and it could pull back and then you could be sitting there going, damn it, I bought it at the very top. Nobody wants to be the bag holder in any of this, you know? Nobody wants to be the guy who bought GameStop when it was 400 or AMC when it was 50 or 60. Um, nobody wants to be that person. And Palantir is, it's had a massive run. It's very overvalued. Um, the price to earnings ratio for the sector median uh, for, for applications and information technology like Palantir is, uh, let me see here, it's, six, it's 26 times. Palantir is 76 times earnings, so it's extremely overvalued. It does not mean that it will fall in price. It doesn't mean that it'll dump, but it's, you're, you're getting it when it's at the very tippy tippy top. Um, I hate to be this guy, but I have a runny nose. I'm very allergic to dogs. And we are dog sitting. I think it's so gross when you blow your nose at like a dining room table or somewhere like that, but I'm allergic to dogs. <clears throat> um, okay, here it is. Finally, my charts opened up here. All right, so Palantir, <clears throat> let me flip the screen and show you. That's probably when I should have blown my nose when you couldn't see me. Palantir right here is, um, let's see, $16, $16. It's just trading sideways, trading sideways. And then the stock has this massive gain and it just skyrockets. It goes all the way from 16 bucks, where it is, is right here, $16, all the way to 25 in a matter of, uh, you know, a couple of days. Whoops. So what we're going to do is we're going to use something called Fibonacci retracements. Uh, you can go on a website like Investopedia and read a little bit more about them, or you can check my technical analysis playlist. Um, to learn a little bit more. But basically what you do is you connect, wait, why did it do this? Did I already have one on the screen? I did. Okay, so you connect your most recent high to your most recent low. And it'll show you, so basically it says zero down here, 100 up here. That means once it hits its high, its most recent high, a full 100% retracement would mean that it would drop all the way back down to its most recent low. That's why it says 0.00, .00 here, and that's $15.91 when it hit this low. Well, actually it's 16.03, but whatever. It hits the high, and now you can see that it starts to pull back a little bit. When it crosses this blue line here in the middle, this is the 20-day moving average, 
and it gets on this negative uh, side of the chart, it's an indicator, it's not a guarantee, but it's an indicator that it could break support and fall lower. It hovers, then there's a little bit more positivity, the stock bounces a little bit, and then it dumps off again. And this time it does break below the, um, the support line, which is right here. So now we have to wait and see, where can it drop? Well, it would drop to its most recent, uh, keeping my eye on $21, it is currently $23.89. What happens when it hits $21? You know, everyone says, oh, these charts only work because everyone looks at them. Well, like, okay, whatever. It doesn't matter why they work. It just matters if they work. Most investors and traders, especially traders who look on rely on technical analysis, are going to be looking at a chart like this, and they're going to be looking at this number. So what happens when it gets to $21.83? It's either going to trade sideways, and this is what I mean when I say trading sideways. It just moves, like, sideways. Or it'll break 21.83 and it'll drop even lower. So we really have to wait and see for when this stock settles and just starts to trade sideways. It might perfectly land on this line and trade sideways, or it might not. So what I would do is I would right click and I would go down to create alert and I would set an alert at this price to notify me when it's close to this range. You can even come up a little bit higher. So like $22 and say, hey, create an alert at at 22 bucks, which we have here, um, at or below, and when it drops below 22.36, I will get an alert. So now you can see this orange line pops up. It says, uh, it says 22.36, and now my phone is gonna buzz if Palantir drops below 22.36. Now I can start really actively paying attention and watching to see what happens with this $21 price target. But that's what I would do. I would just keep an eye on the technical analysis and also the news of the company because some news could come out that could propel the stock way higher. <clears throat> All right. Let's see what we've got. You're trying to figure out what is going on with Tyson as far as you know, it's supply issues. You know, supply issues... Oops. Hello? Supply issues um, don't seem like that big of a deal long term to me. I always look at supply issues like a temporary negative that can become a positive for you, the investor. You could swoop in and buy at a discount. You think about airline stocks or something like that. Maybe airlines are not a great example because they're already not great stocks. But, you know, they have an issue with their plane or something. The stock sells off. Everyone panics. That's when a smart investor says, now might be a good opportunity to buy a little here because it's temporary. It's like when, um, what else? It's like when there's a recall or, uh, you know, the company issues a, a recall saying, oh, our product has some toxic chemical in it. It's bad, of course, but the stock overreacts. Everyone freaks out. The stock crumbles. That's not something that 10 years from now people are going to be thinking about. It's a temporary issue. So if this is the Tyson's thing is temporary, you know, it could be short lived. Microsoft. <clears throat> Pull up Microsoft here. It is currently um, $407 per share. The one-year price target, according to analysts, is $469. That is a 15% move to the upside. Another thing I like about Microsoft, not only is their cloud and their AI and um, their cloud and their AI, uh, but also the fact that there are 34 analysts covering the stock. Of those 34 analysts, and this is what I was talking about earlier when the guy was asking about Tesla, of the 34 analysts covering Microsoft, one has a sell, one has a hold, 32 recommend you buy it. It's very different from Tesla where it was like a whole bunch said sell, a whole bunch said hold, a whole bunch said buy, and it was scattered. Dan Ives, Ives is the best for Tesla. Um, hey, how about ASM or MOS? Let's take a look. ASM, by the way, if you ask a question, I don't answer it right away, don't leave. I try to get to every single question. Um, ASM, no, I don't talk about penny stocks. They're too risky. Um, anything under $5 is a penny stock. I would only treat it like a lottery ticket and put in what you're willing to lose and nothing more because you will probably lose. Um, MOS, I've never heard of this company, but it's down one year, five years, and 10 years. So no matter when you look at it, it's down. That's not great. It has a 2.75% dividend, which is okay. Um, it has a B plus dividend safety grade. Um, they've had their dividend for five years. Um, 
They have an A grade for profitability, A, uh, I'm sorry, A minus for growth, A for valuation. Their momentum is rated at a D and the revisions come in at a C. Hey, thank you for the heart. Hey, it's ambitious. Thank you. Um, let's take a look here. So this mosa uh, mosaic company you've asked about, MOS, it is currently $29 a share. Their one-year price target is $39. Um, and that is an upside of around 34%. It has a moderate buy rating, 11 analysts are covering it. Zero say sell, three say buy, eight say hold. Uh, I'm not really sure how that becomes a moderate buy when the overwhelming majority say hold it. Um, the one year price target average is 39, highest is 50, lowest is 34, and it's currently 29. So what I like about this one is no matter how you slice it, all the analysts who are covering it think it still will be higher than it is currently. <clears throat> uh, I'm holding tire. Uh, we looked at Mama. Um, it's a penny stock. I wouldn't touch it. Um, Palantir is AI Thursday. I'm not sure what that means. What are your thoughts on FBTC long term? FBTC. Oops. FBTC is the fiduci uh, Fidelity Wise Origin Bitcoin ETF. It is forty two dollars. It says it has no expense ratio, um, but that could just be that the information isn't out yet, um, at least on this website. I'm using Seeking Alpha. <clears throat> it came out on the markets on January 8th, so it's only been on the markets for a little bit over a month. In that time, it's up 11%. Their number one holding is Bitcoin. They, own, they only hold Bitcoin. It is a Bitcoin ETF. Uh, it gives you exposure to Bitcoin. I am sure at some point... This fund will, let me just go on their website and see if it says, uh, if they have a, if the website themselves, if Fidelity says that there is a fee. Um, pricing and performance. Yeah. So Fidelity says the expense ratio is 0.25%. So you are paying a fee. So in my opinion, just buy the Bitcoin. Like option one for you is to open a crypto.com account or whatever crypto exchange you want to use. Open a crypto.com account. You want $500 worth of Bitcoin or 5,000 or 1,000, whatever you want. You buy it, it's yours. You own it. On the other hand, you could just say, nah, I don't want to do all that. I'll just go and buy a Bitcoin ETF. But for that privilege, you're going to pay a fee of 0.25%. Uh, it's not much. So if you were to buy $10,000 worth, your fee would be 25 bucks for the year. So it's not like you're spending a lot of money. Um, but why bother paying a fee at all when you can just buy it directly for yourself unless you really just didn't want to go through the hassle of, of doing that? Jim Rat Official, what's up? What about XRP? I like it. I own it. Um, but I am not a crypto guy. Um, what is a good price for Palantir? We talked about it. Oh, that was you. Um, I'm going to be looking at around $21 for Palantir because it looks like it's in a downtrend right now. Um, but it, if it levels out at 24 or 23, we'll just have to wait and see. Okay, I'm scrolling down to the bottom. I think I've got everyone. Um, Spy Eye, what do you think? I have a video on it in my playlist. SMCI, it is, um, it's had a massive run. I don't buy stuff that's had massive runs. I just go, oh, well, I missed out. Um, I'm not going to chase something that's up 750% in a year. Um, the question you have to ask yourself is, if you purchased it last year when it was $90, what would you be doing right now? If you say, oh, I'd still be holding it, then maybe you buy it here. Because if you're still, if you say, I'm still going to hold it, then you're expecting more gains in the future. You think it's going to do very well long term based on the research you've done. If you say, I bought it at 90 and it's $776, I'm out. I've made 757%. I'd be a fool to not hit that register and take some of the gains. Then you're not the only one thinking that. Now, maybe this fund is overwhelmingly owned by hedge funds and maybe they are, are holding it for the long term. It, it says 64% of the shares are held by hedge funds. So, you know, it, it might not crater and it might at a certain point, these financial analysts who are looking at these stocks might say, Oh, this is way overextended. It's way overvalued. We're locking in gains. And when that 64% of the shareholders are institutions, if they start trimming back on this thing, it could drop dramatically. 
Um, there are only 55 million shares on the market, so not very many when you compare it to something like Apple that has 15 billion. So those funds could dump their shares. This thing could crater. At 778, I'm not willing to take that chance. Do you think if you went to college, you would still have learned how to day trade? Um, good question. Probably not. If I'd gone to college, I'd probably be stuck in a job that I hate right now because that's what you do. That's what all of my friends have done. Every single friend from high school, with the exception of like, I would say two or three, are really, truly, truly doing what they love. Um, the majority went to college too young, like most people do. They're 18. They don't know what they want to do with their lives. They have to pick a major. They're already worried about the debt that they're incurring. They pick a major. They pick right. They pick wrong. Now they're stuck in a job they don't like or that isn't lucrative enough. Maybe they love what they majored in, but it isn't lucrative. They're not making good money. Maybe they're making a lot of money, but it's soul-sucking and they hate it. Maybe they picked a major that was fun to them and they can't get a job in that field. And they have to go and do membership sales at a gym or something like that. Not knocking membership sales jobs, but you've just incurred all this debt because you were 18 and forced to go into something that you weren't ready for. Wait, you can always go later. Um, I think most people should take a couple years off. And I think parents look at college like, one, they want the kid out of the house. Um, and two, they don't want their kids to just like become complacent and get a job at McDonald's or something like that. I had a lot of friends who said, can I please take a gap year to go backpacking through Europe? And the parents would say, absolutely not. You go to college. <laughs> um, and then they went and dropped out and the parents were livid. It was like, you cost us $50,000. Oh my God. And the kid was like, I told you I wasn't ready. <laughs> um, then they would go backpacking through Europe and take a couple years off and they went back when they were ready and they got to pick a major that really interested them because they learned a little bit more about who they were. So I don't know if I would have become a stock trader, um, but I'm glad I did. I love it. Um, what's better, Seeking Alpha or Tip Ranks? They're both in very drastically different websites. I use them both for two uh, very different things. Tip Ranks, I look at just briefly. I go on, I look, I see what is the one year price target from the analysts? How many analysts have a hold on it? How many have a sell? It just gives me a general idea. So if I'm looking to buy a stock and I go on and it says 30 analysts are covering and 15 or 18 of them uh, say hold it or sell it, then I go, ooh, let me read a little bit more about this company and see what the analysts think. Maybe I disagree with them. Maybe I think, oh, these analysts are just talking about a short-term issue and I'm not really worried about that. But if they all think it's going to drop, maybe I buy 50 shares now and in the event that the analysts are right and it drops, I can buy 50 more shares at a lower price. And that way, by buying the 50, I have some skin in the game in case they're wrong, but I haven't spent all my money in case they're right. So if the stock skyrockets, I'm going to say, hey, at least I got 50 shares. And if the stock tanks, I'm going to go, hey, at least I didn't buy my full position and I can buy more. So I use it for a couple different reasons. Seeking Alpha is much more um, in-depth it has financial reports, it has valuation reports, it has dividend reports, it has their quant, uh, quantitative analysis uh, research, it has factor grades like valuation D, profitability A, stuff like that. They also have dividend safety grades, so it's way more involved and way more in-depth. Seeking Alpha also has analyst reviews, but you know I don't really trust a lot of those, so that's the one part of Seeking Alpha I kind of ignore. By the way, if you want to try Seeking Alpha, we did a video once ages ago. They hired me to make a promotional video for them, and they gave me a coupon code that's still good today. It's $50 off if you want to try it. Make sure you use that code to save you some money. It's in my link tree in my bio. Stocks went down today. I know. I'm watching. Um, it was the CPI data came out. It was not as good as we were hoping. Markets were down 553 when I started this live. Markets are now down 480, so it's come. It's it's. The selling pressure has kind of cooled off a little bit, which is good, but it's still we're still way down. Check out SMCI. Yes, we've been talking about it all morning. Um, technicals on Max N. I've never heard of this one. Max N. Maxion Solar. Um, so this company looks. Let me. Uh, let me get a little. I don't want to cover the microphone. Okay. So the first thing I notice about this stock is it kind of bounces in a little bit of a trading range. Um, let's see here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to do price level. I drop one here and I'm going to do another price level right 
here. And now you've kind of got the trading range for this stock. It kind of hangs in this range. There's this one exception here and there's this one exception here. Um, but basically what I would be doing is keeping my eye on this $4.45 line right down here. And I would consider selling the stock when it would uh, approach this $5.51 um, cent line up here. So this is support and this is resistance. It is being supported at this level one, two, three, four times. And it is resisting, uh, I guess a more accurate would be to, um, to move it a little bit lower. And it hits resistance here and here. Um, so a couple of times here and here, and then this one more time all the way over here, but then it breaks out and it goes much higher. So what I would be doing with a stock like Maxion Solar is keeping an eye on this. I would set, so right now we've had this big run. The stock went, um, it broke over this resistance and it pushed way higher, but now it's dumped. So I'm watching and I'm gonna wait until it gets down into the $4.40 range. If it does, and then it trades sideways and it doesn't break below like it does right here, I would consider making a trade so I would get in. And then as it started rising a little bit higher, especially if it enters overbought territory, like you can see it's doing right here, this is the relative strength index, um, this is when I would sell. So I would buy it if it hits oversold, like it does down here where it turns blue. And it's generally around this level. You can see it one time, two times, maybe three times, a fourth time, a fifth time. If it breaks below, I sell, I cut my losses. If it pushes higher, I plan on taking my profits somewhere over five bucks. That's how I would trade a stock like this. Let me see what else I have missed. Um, how about Rio? Hello? Rio, Rio Tinto. Let me pull up the one year price target as well. Rio Tinto is one of the largest mining companies in the world. They also have a really solid dividend. Um, however, in the last year, the last 12 months, the stock is down 10%. In the last five years, it's up 30%. In the last decade, it's up 23%. So they're not a massive growth company. With a company like Rio Tinto, you're buying a company like this to diversify your holdings. So you've got your growth, you've got your, uh, your tech stocks, you've got your exposure to a variety of different sectors or index funds. Now you want one that has a little bit of, uh, let's see here. Um, well, I was gonna say a secure dividend, but they don't. They have a dividend safety grade of D minus. So I'd be very careful with a stock like this that is down in the last year and has a poor dividend safety grade. However, their profitability is rated at A+, plus, but uh, they still come in with a D-minus dividend safety grade, which is a little concerning. Um, and it's based on, I guess, their cash flow ratio, their cash, uh, sorry, their cash flow uh, and sustainable growth rate um, is, is pretty poor. So you run the risk that it could have a dividend cut, which would be less than ideal. However, according to the analyst, Rio Tinto is currently 66 bucks. The analysts have a one-year price target of $81. Another, however, there are only three analysts covering the stock. That's not very many. Of those three, they all recommend you buy it, but there's only three covering it. That gives me pause. Market is low today. Yes, sure is. You trade crypto. No, I don't really trade crypto. I used to trade crypto when I first started. When crypto really first became a thing, and I realized through a lot of the other accounts that I follow on TikTok that are crypto related, that the charts that I use for stocks apply exactly the same to the, the charts that I use for crypto. I got really excited. I also got really excited because crypto never closes. It's not like the stock market, 9.30 to 4 p.m. Crypto is open 24 seven, Christmas, every holiday, it never closes, it's always open. You could be trading at two in the morning, which is great, but it's also terrible because you can be trading at two in the morning. So I remember when it first started, I would buy, I would go in and a lot of these um, altcoins were really cheap. And so you could buy a couple thousand dollars worth and it could skyrocket in the matter of minutes or hours and then it would dump. And I didn't know much about crypto at the time, but it was very exciting to see these massive gains that were really quick. You had to, you had to move quick. You had to get in and, and get out and take your profits and move on, which was great until I realized that I was waking up at two, three, four, five in the morning and grabbing my phone to see what the coins were doing. <clears throat> um, and that was not healthy. 
If you're long Tesla long term, why are stocks like ChargePoint so low? Um, they're new companies. They uh, they have a lot of debt. They cannot get loans because right now you look at the interest rates for loans are very very high. Um, it's a speculative area by nature. Tesla's kind of cornered the field right now with charging. You know, they have their charging stations, which they've just opened up to all the competitors. So all the other cars can now use Tesla chargers. It didn't used to be like that. So now you're seeing Ford making adapters to give their people, who, whoever buys an electric vehicle from Ford, they go, well, how can I charge this thing uh, at a Tesla? So Ford is now giving them adapters so they can use Tesla charging stations. So Tesla's really cornered the, the charging market. Um, so you factor in all of that stuff, not to mention we have an election coming up and one candidate is pro-green energy and the other is not. Biden wants to spend, or he, uh, I don't know how much he wants to spend, but he wants to put half a million chargers on the road by 2030. That's a long way away. 2030 is a long way away. So these companies that already have massive debt and cannot get loans are depending on Biden's infrastructure plan and green energy to stay in business. But in order to get, but first they have to get to 2030 when they can get some of that funding. I mean, I'm sure they're getting some of it now, but it's a long-term vision. So they have to be able to stay in business long enough to benefit from that first. Second, if Trump gets elected, pff, that's gone. He's going to come and he's going to cut it tomorrow. It's going to be, it's going to be like, like that day one thing that they always ask the candidates, what are you going to do on day one? He's going to get rid of all the green energy funding. It doesn't mean that electric vehicles will go away. But they're just not going to get government funding, which means companies like this, ChargePoint, which is down 8% today, could be done. Or what I think will happen is if Trump gets reelected, electric vehicles are still here to stay. Um, I think big companies, Exxon, BP, Shell, all the gas station companies will look at electric vehicle chargers and say, this company is worth under a billion dollars, ChargePoint. It's worth uh, $948 million. That's like a drop in the bucket to Exxon. Exxon could just come in and buy ChargePoint tomorrow, and they'll probably come in and even lowball them even further. It's $2. They'll probably come in and say, you know, we'll buy you for a dollar. You know, a, a dollar a share. We'll take over your company. We'll give you $500 million. and Or you can go bankrupt because that's where it could likely head for a lot of these companies. Exxon will buy one of them or Shell or BP or whoever. And let's say the Exxon gas station in your neighborhood has 10 pumps. Maybe they'll convert two of them to electric vehicle chargers using charge points already existing technology. Why would Exxon go out and spend half a billion dollars creating their own electric vehicle charger when they could just buy the competition at pennies on the dollar? I think that's what's going to end up happening. One way or another, by the way. I think it'll happen either way because these companies are in big trouble. <clears throat> but Tesla has the market cornered. That's why people are bullish on Tesla and bearish on some of these smaller newer, higher debt companies. Um, Mad Woman says, specifically your thoughts on dollar cost averaging VOO weekly to max out your Roth IRA. I'm 28. Go for it. Um, weekly, you know, really it depends. Dollar cost averaging, there's no real like right method. It's just what's right for you. So if you want to throw in another, I don't know, it's $454. You might also consider something like SPLG, which is the exact same thing but it's $50 per share, which means you can buy more shares more rapidly. Um, so if you're putting in 50 bucks a month into VOO, it's gonna take you a very long time to get one full share. Or you could put $50 a month into SPLG and get a share per month or a share per week or whatever you're planning on doing. Um, so I don't know how, how much you're planning on buying. It's 450. So if you're doing like $200 a week, $200 a week, you can, you can stack shares pretty quickly. Um, some people dollar cost average on the first of the month, other dollar cost average on the last of the month. Um, doesn't really matter. Uh, you can't time things, you know, so this whole notion that you're going to get it at the lowest price every month, nobody knows. It'll drive you nuts, which is why I think weekly can be a little bit um, stressful. Uh, unless you're just automatically every Monday, you don't even care, every Monday or every whatever day you want. Doesn't matter. The goal here is to get as many shares as you can, as quick as you can in high quality ETFs like VOO or SPLG. So you can retire earlier because working sucks. How do you feel about PATH? UI PATH? I just posted a video on them a week ago. Go check it out. Um, why is Apple down? Why is the market down? CPI data came out. It's, it's consumer price index uh, and it went up. So it means that we're spending a little bit more on things, specifically housing. Um, housing is the one thing that we can't get under control. I mean, 
you know, I, I go to the grocery store, everything is cheap again. Milk is cheap, eggs are cheap. Um, not everything, ground beef is still expensive, meat is still relatively expensive. Um, but it's, gas is way cheaper now than it was. I mean, uh, we drove down, we're in Greensboro, we're dog sitting my girlfriend's parents, um, <clears throat> dog. And when we left DC, gas was like 380. By the time we got down south, it was 280. So dramatically cheaper gas prices. So a lot of things have come down, but the big things are housing has gone up um, a lot. Let's see what else it says. Um, core CPI, which excludes volatility, uh, volatile items like food and energy, still rose 0.4%. Um, it was expected to have increased 0.3 and it went up 0.4. Wait, is this right? Oh yeah, so it went up a little bit more than they were expecting. Um, but they're not saying what else went up. Uh, but that's why the markets are down right now is because people are paying way more for things and that's not good. Especially in the year of an election, double not good. And Apple's probably just down because everything is down. I don't think it's anything, you know, when you see the whole markets are down, Usually it's not company specific. Usually it's broader, like economic. Um, but Apple's only down a dollar. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even worry. It's not even down one full percent. I personally don't know much about the technical analysis for investing. This is from Anya. Hello, Anya. Um, <clears throat> Technical analysis is more for trading than investing, so you don't have to know much about it. I don't. I almost never use. Um, I almost never use technical analysis for investing. It's really just mostly for trading. The only time I'll consider it for an investment is if I'm looking at a stock that I want to buy and it looks like it's very overextended, like it's had a lot of growth very suddenly. I'll pull up a chart and I'll say, oh. It looks like the volume is slowing. It looks like the stock is in a downtrend. Maybe people are taking profits. So. Long term, it doesn't matter what you buy the stock at. If it's $80 and you think in the future it's going to be much higher, it doesn't matter if it's 80 or 70, 20 years from now. But in the moment, 80 and 70 is a big difference. Um, so if it's $80 and I look at the chart and I go, oh man, this thing could pull back a little bit. I'm not really trying to time things too much, but I'm looking at the charts. I'm looking at the trend. It's in a downtrend. It's selling off after a massive gain. I, I don't mind waiting to save a little bit of money in the moment even though 20 years from now, it won't matter. What are your thoughts about NVIDIA? Have we chatted about it? What are your thoughts about it? <clears throat> um, I'm holding it forever. <laughs> uh, I have no plans on selling my NVIDIA. I'm sorry, by the way, that I keep itching my nose, but I'm very allergic to dogs and we're dog sitting. Um, NVIDIA is two, uh, it's up 236% in the last year. So I don't know if I would personally be buying it here. Um, people have been looking at NVIDIA for the last year saying, I don't know if I'd buy it here. I don't know if I'd buy it here. And it keeps growing. At a certain point, that's not going to happen. At a certain point, this thing is going to hit a level and it's going to dump. Maybe it's going to be because of bad earnings. Maybe it's going to be because of some supply chain issue. Maybe it's going to be a recession. Maybe it's going to be something global that happens, like a war. You know, nobody knows. Could be something within the company, like they forged a lot of their things or they lied about their earnings or their, you know, profits or whatever. Could be a lot of things that bring a stock down. But when it's had this much of a run, I'm usually the one who goes, eh, I'm not getting it here. And you miss out. You know, I mean, there's probably a lot of people in this live or probably a lot of people on TikTok who were watching the stock when it was three or $400 going, are you kidding and they keep watching it, and at a certain point, someone's gonna go, oh, forget it, I'm getting in, and they're gonna get in at like 850, and then it's gonna dump. <laughs> Just their luck, that's what happens to everyone. Um, arms unlock date when, they're, uh, when their lockup expires. Let's take a look. Uh, March 12th. Have you seen the show Billions? This is from Big Swan. You know, I watched like the first few episodes and I got kind of bored, but I know a lot of other stock traders on this app who love it. When is Robin getting her own TikTok account? And then Kindhearted says that would be awesome. Um, you know, <laughs> we're just dog sitting, so uh, we see Robin a couple times a year. Uh, but, you know, if she was here all the time, yeah, she would probably have her own TikTok account. Snow, Snowflake is 
um, $230 a share. Um, it is up 42% in the last 12 months, in the last five years. It hasn't even been public for five years. Since going public, it is up 0.43%. So it's not even up one full percent since it went public. So if you bought it on IPO day, you would be up 0.43%. However, if you bought it last year uh, at 169 or 161, you'd be up 41%, which is not bad. The growth is A+, plus, profitability is B+, plus, momentum is A, revisions is A-. minus. So across the board, pretty good grades, except for valuation. It's a little overvalued compared to other stocks in the sector, but like we were talking about earlier, maybe it doesn't matter. Uh, some people might be, whoops, some people might be willing to pay more because they think it'll be more valuable in the future. Um, Snowflake has a one-year price target of 219, so actually down. Um, there are 23 analysts covering the stock. Oh, actually, this might just be a, low, a, a earlier price target, an early high price target that they've surpassed. So I don't think it's a downgrade. Their highest price target is 255. So their previous price target was 219, which they've already hit. Their lowest price target is 160, probably from the analyst who has a sell on it. Their highest is 255. It's currently 229. Um, of the 32 analysts covering it, overwhelming majority says buy it. 23, 23 of the analysts say buy, eight say hold, one says sell. Uh, this is from G or J Jat, um, who says, uh, I heard 10% is a success rate for day traders. Yeah, it's about that. It probably is even less. I've heard it's a 93% failure rate for stock traders. This is mostly because of, um, this is mostly due to uh, an, an inability to have a plan and stick with it. So I think what really kills stock traders is that they get into loser stocks and they just go, please come back up, please come back up. And this is not a stock trading strategy and they lose. Uh, a good stock trader, a good stock trader and a bad stock trader could get in on the exact same stock and have a vastly different outcome based on their experience and their, it's more psychological than it is anything else. You have to look at a stock that's dropping and just be ruthless and hit sell. A lot of new traders can't do that. They, they, they've researched, they've studied, they've learned the charts, they've picked a stock that they like and it starts to work against them and they're like, they're too proud. They're like, I can't be wrong, really? I can't be wrong. And so they refuse to cut the loss and they just say, it'll come back, it'll come back. And then they're down 5%. And then they're down 10%. And then they're down 20 and 30. And then they hit that point where they're like, well, I'm not going to sell it now. I'm down 40, 50%. I'm not going to lose 50% of my money. So I'll just, I'll just hold it. And that's called opportunity cost. When the money that could be spent on other things is tied up in a loser. They can't access that money without selling it. But they don't want to sell it because they don't want to lose 50%. And that's when they go, eh, stock trading sucks. And they walk away. The professional yeah. stock trader could get in on the exact same stock at the exact same price and watch it go down 2%, 3%, 4%, 5% and hit that 5% number and they go, I'm out. Um, VOO, you can't go wrong with VOO. Uh, I like SPLG just because it's more affordable per share, but they're the exact same thing. Um, S Jazz Petit says Forex trading. I do not trade Forex. I've never got into it. I couldn't tell you the first thing about it. Um, Ryaku is saying ZGYL. Z G Y L. I don't see it. Have you ever done pro wrestling on the indie circuit? I've never done pro wrestling, professional wrestling, period. On the very first day of class, I got thrown over the top rope, hit the cement, and I cracked a vertebrae, broke my back. So, no. Uh, are you a millionaire? I don't share that on the internet. Um, is breakout trading viable? I do that. Um, it's basically, it's like a, a kind of momentum trading. So, so yes, but you have to be quick. Uh, usually when a stock hits a breakout, it surges for a little and then it dumps because everyone takes profits. So your goal isn't to make all the money, it's just to make some of it. AI, uh, NVIDIA is killing it because of the AI demand on chips. Yes. Any thoughts on GCT? GCT. Giga Cloud? Um, Jeez. Uh, it is $31. It is up 525%. Like I said earlier with some other stocks, I don't chase into things that have had massive gains. Uh, this is something that I look at and I go, oh, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to buy something that's up 525%, no matter how good it looks and no matter how bright the technology is. Um, because, uh, GCT, because you're buying it at all time highs. 
That's not a, it's not a game I want to play. Um, so I look at stocks like that and I go, oh, well, um, I don't go, I got to get it. Oh, I missed the first 500% rally. So I'm going to buy it now and hope for the next usually doesn't happen. Um, usually it kind of putters out at around, you know, whatever it is and then dumps or just trades sideways. Maybe it goes up a little bit more, but I'm not willing to take a risk on something that's up 500% in one year. Um, their one year price target is also 24 and it's currently 31. There are two analysts covering the stock. So not a lot. Um, Kiki, you asked about Palantir already. You said price, entry price. I made a, I went way in depth and did a whole video on it. If you missed it, um, I'm sorry, but I'm going to be downloading this live and reposting it on YouTube later today. So I see you've asked already about Palantir entry price. I'm, I, we talked about it at length um, for like 10 minutes. Um, so go find it on YouTube later today when I post it. Oh, maybe, maybe I just scrolled up and saw your earlier question. Sorry. Um, <laughs> in that case, sorry. Um, someone's asking about Sintas, C-T-A-S. It is currently... $609. It is up 36% in the last 12 months. They offer a very small dividend. It's under 1%. Uh, it's $609 a share, which is incredible. Um, their one year price target is 627. So according to the analyst, it has about 3% upside. The highest price target is 700. The lowest is 526. Of the 14 analysts covering the stock, zero say sell, six say buy. Uh, I'm sorry, six say hold, eight say buy. So it's kind of split. Okay, let me scroll down to the bottom here. And then I got to wrap this thing up in about 10 minutes. Are you still recommending Tesla? No, I never recommend anything. Um, thoughts on, and that's the second person who's asked about Tesla. I'm a little disappointed. Usually I get mentioned, usually I asked, I get asked about Tesla like 30, 40 times during a live today, only two. That's a, that's a bummer. What about JEPQ rather than treasury? A JEPQ is a little bit riskier than treasury. So you need to understand the risks. Um, but it's not entirely risky because they have a hybrid approach. So JEPQ and JEPI both have a hybrid approach. They buy and hold some investments and they sell covered calls. Um, but treasury bonds are considered a lot safer. Um, so I would say they're vastly different investments. Um, does ADT have long-term prospects? ADT. Um, this is currently $6 a share. Um, it's at high risk of cutting their dividend. It's down 21% in the last year. It's down 10% in the last five years. Since going public, it's down 40%. Personally, wouldn't touch it um, unless you really researched the company and you said, oh, there's some potential growth here. Um, there's not a single analyst covering the stock. So I personally would treat it like a lottery ticket. I wouldn't put in more than I was willing to lose. Um, Hive Mapper, never heard of it. Uh, Kiki, great financial content. Thank you. Bro, it's in your bio. What's in my bio? Um, uh, this is not financial advice. This is my favorite. My favorite long-term investments. I bought WWE in 1999. I bought Apple in 2003. I bought Meta in 2012 on IPO day. And I bought Tesla in 2016. These are my favorite long-term investments. They're not for you. These are mine. Um, hey, Judy Jay, how are you? Devon, how are you, man? I'm good. Um, Got it. Good. Something about Biden. What's your Bitcoin TO? I don't know what that means. McDonald's will be a good long-term investment. Yes, I think McDonald's will be fine long-term. Um, how big is the downs, uh, downswing expected to be due to the CPI? I mean, I think we're seeing it right now. Markets are down 485%. 485 points. God. Um, 485 points. Um, it's down 1.25%. 1, 1. Not 400%. It's down 1%. Um, I think this is probably as low as it's going to go. I mean, you know, we're just guessing here. But if this is where we are at at 11 in the morning, um, you know, there could be more news that comes out later today or um, more fear on the news and on the media about a recession coming and stuff like that. And that could drive things down. Nobody knows. Your guess is as good as mine. We could close the day up a little bit. We could say, oh, things will still things are still on the track to improve. 
um, uh, and this is a short-term negative issue, or they could look at it and say, oh my God, an election and a recession. And then we could see that the markets are down 800 points by the end of the day or later in the week. Nobody knows. Um, but we also have a lot of big earnings later in the week, um, especially today. So today after market closes, Airbnb, Upstart, Robinhood, Lyft, um, even Instacart and Zillow are reporting earnings today. And all of these have a lot of, oh no, that stupid, that thing came on. They have a Roomba and it just comes on randomly and it's loud. Perfect time to end this live. Um, tomorrow is Sony and Twilio and Occidental Petroleum. On Thursday is Crocs, John Deere, DraftKings, Coinbase, and Roku, um, and DoorDash. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of things that like tell us about the overall economy. Um, so it should be an interesting week. Uh, that could help. Um, Bitfarm, I don't know much about that. Amazon this year, Bezos is supposed to sell millions of shares. Um, This Roomba is so loud and so rude to come on while I'm working. I wish I could tell it like Alexa, you know, like go away. Um, Amazon this year, I'm not really worried about Bezos selling millions of shares. Amazon has um, 10 billion shares on the market. So if Jeff Bezos, they have 10.4 billion. So if he came in and sold, uh, hello. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it doesn't really buy. It doesn't really worry me. I mean, they still got ten billion um, on the market. Ben, you've been a trader for thirty-seven years. Whoa. Uh, the Giga Cloud. We answered. I like Pave. Um, let's see. I think. Um, Hi, Sarah. How do you feel about a bus? I've never heard of it. A bus, Artibus Biofarm. No, it's a penny stock. I don't mention. I don't mess with penny stocks. Walmart is on my list. Does it matter pre or post? Um, you know, it's hard to say. I mean, this is one of those things that people always get pissed with me when I run down every variable and I don't give a clear answer. And that's usually because there isn't a clear answer. Um, you can see it split and then skyrocket. You can see it split and then sell off. You can see it split and then hang sideways. Some people like to get in ahead of the split. Some people like to get in after. Um, it doesn't really matter if you're a long-term investor in Walmart um, other than um, you might want to see what happens after the split. Maybe it splits and people get kind of sour on the split and it drops a little bit. You're just guessing though. One approach is to buy a little now and a little after the split. That way you get some skin in the game. It splits. Maybe it sells off a little. You can average down into a lower price or maybe you don't care. It's 169, it's gonna be, um, it's a three for one split. So 169, it's gonna be around $56 after the split around. So, you know what, you buy it at 56 or you don't buy it and then it, it drops to 52, you know, a decade from now, it's not really gonna matter. It's gonna be much higher a decade from now, hopefully. Um, so it shouldn't really that be that big of an, an issue. Uh, what do you think about Rivian? Um, I like it. I own it. I view it speculative. So I, I only have what I'm willing to lose. Um, it's $15 right now. It's down around seven and a half percent today because everything is dropping. Um, but you know, it's a small part of my portfolio. So if I lose it all, it, it is what it is. Recession, you know, it could be, I don't, I don't know. <clears throat> Remember millionaires buy low and sell high, but billionaires buy high and sell higher. Uh, that's funny. Um, I've always been a, a fan of the whole buy high, sell higher approach. Um, I read it in this book from this guy named Nicholas Darvis, who basically, he didn't invent momentum investing or momentum trading, but he's the guy who kind of like put it on the map um, in the 1950s and 60s. And his whole approach was buy high, sell higher. So there you go. This is from money. Market needs a 20% correction. It might, but when's it going to happen? And what's going to happen in the meantime? If you remember... Last year, all the finance creators were coming out saying, I'm selling my shares, a recession is happening this year, I'm dumping. And the markets went up 20%. Now let's see what we're at year to date. Year to date, the S&P is up 4%. So in the last 12 months, up 20, you know, up, we're up around 25% in the last year or so. Um, it could go up another 20%, maybe not this year, but it could go up another 20% and then it could go up another 10% and 
and then it could go up another 5% and then it could drop 20 in two or three years. Nobody knows. Um, so the people who say I'm waiting for the 20% drop are the ones who often, not always, but often miss the boat. All those traders last year and all those TikTok influencers from last year who said I'm sitting out the markets this year, I'm selling everything, missed 20% gains. Yikes. You can get fractional shares from many brokerages. Yes, I can't pay 480 on VOO, it's too hard. And you don't have to. This is for kind-hearted, you don't have to. VOO is just one of many S&P 500 index funds and they are all exactly the same. I can't stress it enough. They are exactly the same. You will not buy, have better returns with VOO or SPY or SPLG. You won't make more money. They're the exact same. Um, they're different because some have been around longer. Some have more holdings than others. Um, but everything, other, and some have slightly higher fees. I think SPY is 0 0.09. SPY is 0 0.09. So if you had 10,000 invested, you're paying $9 in fees per year. Not a lot. Uh, VOO is 0 0.03. So you're paying $3 if you have a $10,000 investment. This is why it's so funny to me when people get all up in arms over the fees. You know, we're talking about three bucks. Even on 100,000, you know, what is it, $30? Like it's not that big. It's not, it would only be impacting you if you had like millions and millions of shares. And then we have SPLG, which has an expense ratio of 0 0.02. So by buying SPLG, you are getting, it's at $58 a share, number one. Number two, it has the lowest fees. And number three, it's the exact same thing as VOO or SPY. So for all the people going, which one is better? They're all identical. Synthus, we talked about, I think I might've already read that. Um, keeping the VOO that I have and onward with SPLG, I like that approach. A lot of times people go, oh damn it, I bought VOO, I should have bought SPLG, I'm gonna sell VOO. And no, 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 you don't have to do that. You're gonna, number one, if it's in an individual account, you might be paying taxes. And number two, you already bought those shares and maybe you bought them at a lower price point. So keep it, keep the lower price point and then f moving forward, start in with something else. Um, v says dividend stocks. Uh, yes, dividend stocks. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, dividend stocks. I like dividend stocks. I've got playlists on dividend stocks. You can check all the playlists out here on TikTok. Um, electric cars are a joke. You know, I'm sure people said that when the first cars came out too. When Ford and, you know, whoever came out with the first couple of cars on the road, they were like, these things are garbage. They're loud. They don't have side mirrors. They don't have seat belts. How do I tell someone to get out of my way? There's no horn. Um, you know, some of the cars back then were open. So, I mean, I'm sure people were getting skin cancer and they were going, oh, I'm getting sunburned. Like, I'm sure in the beginning when the first car came out, everyone was pissed and they thought it was a fad and they thought it was a joke and they thought it was stupid. And you know, what if I get a flat tire? What will I do? You know, people were just probably whining and crying about the first generation of cars and now look where we are. And I think that's what we're seeing again with the electric vehicles. People are going, they're stupid. They freeze in the winter. They don't have high range. Whatever, man, we're in the very beginning of a brand new industry. 20, 30 years from now, we'll be laughing about how we, we thought that this was just a fad. If Trump gets reelected, short NATO. Yeah, really. Um, is this a correction we've been waiting for? Um, no, I mean, a correction would be like 10, 20%, and we're only down 1%, so this is just a little pullback. Uh, I mean, it could be the beginning of something larger, but I don't think so. Did I miss the chat about NVIDIA? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've been talking about it throughout the course of the live. I will be downloading this live when I end and posting it on YouTube later today, so you can go back and, and watch it all. If you missed anything, um, thoughts on DWAC, wouldn't touch it. Uh, QYLD, I'm having really, I'm having second thoughts on them. It seems like I've had bad runs on options and covered stocks. Yeah, covered call ETFs, you're, you're almost always going to lose your initial investment in them unless they're also doing a hybrid approach like JEPI or JEPQ, which buy and hold some investments and sell covered calls on the other. QYLD is 100% covered calls. Richard, thank you for the rose. So generally, here's, here's generally what happens, and I gotta be brief because I gotta wrap this live up, but generally what happens with QILD is they own the shares, they sell the covered calls, the shares get called away. So then they have to repurchase the shares and sell the covered calls. And if the shares don't get called away and the stocks, uh, the stocks that they're holding drop, then you can end up sitting on a loss um, in those shares then maybe they get called away, but they've lost money on them. So they have to repurchase them. And this whole process of repurchasing every single month, 
Sometimes they get called away, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're purchasing at way higher and then the stocks drop. Can cause uh, losses on your initial investment. You really have to tune out. You, you really have to say, I'm putting in $10,000 or whatever you're putting in and forget it. I'm here for the income. Um, some people are okay with that, others are not. If you're not, you might wanna look at something like Jeppy or JepQ, which has much smaller returns when compared to QILD, but it's a little bit more insulated because of their hybrid approach. Um, okay, I think we've got all the questions. Oh my God, another 80 questions. Um, um, the question on Shopify, you could invest uh, here. Let's see, it's down, you said it's down 10% today. Yeah, wow, ouch. Um, this could be a great opportunity to add a little bit, um, but the stock is still very overvalued compared to the overall sector that they're in, which is internet services, you know, drop shipping e-commerce. The average price to earnings ratio is 26 times. Shopify is 130 times. So very overvalued, um, which means that they could have more downside here. So you're looking at it going, it's down 10% by the dip. It could go down another 20% in the next couple of months and then 30% and then 50, you know, it could keep dropping or this is the opportunity to add a little bit. You don't know, nobody knows. So if you wanted to buy another 100 shares here, you could buy, you could buy 10. You could average in slowly if you thought that this company was gonna be around for a while. On the other hand, if you think it's just a fad, this whole e-commerce thing and drop shipping and whatever, um, then maybe you say, I'm not gonna keep throwing good money into a losing stock, I don't wanna take that risk. You could also wait for things to turn around, which means like we were talking about earlier, that you would maybe wait until things recover. So you'd be buying at a higher price, but at least you'd have the peace of mind of knowing that the risk was removed. So like the guy whose username here was money, um, buy high, sell higher, might be your option to just wait and wait for it to recover and then you buy it. Maybe it's 90 at that point. Electric vehicles don't work in 40 years. Oh, in sub, in, in, in negative 40. Um, okay, well, most people don't live where it's negative 40 degrees. So if you live in a place where it's negative 40, don't buy an electric vehicle. Where to invest 7,000 in a Roth IRA, you're 22, S&P 500 index funds. Check my playlist. Uh, check my pinned video on this page when you leave. Go watch it. It says, new to investing, do this. Go watch that one. Also, go watch my playlist on investing by age. You are 22 years old. This is for Kodak 420. Um, go watch the investing by age video. There are videos on how to invest when you're 20. Go watch those. Do you pay twice the fees if you buy the same stock with a different broker? Um, yes. So if you have a Robinhood account and a Fidelity account and you buy two separate and you buy um, uh, uh, an index fund both in two, yes, you're paying the fees in both. Um, but you're not really technically paying the fees. It just comes out of the fund's annual returns. So you're not getting a bill. Um, you're not being told, hi, you bought you know 10,000 shares, so you owe 20 bucks this year. There's no bill. You don't really have to worry about paying something. It, they just take it out of the fund. Um, but yeah, if, if, you, if you own in separate accounts, you'd be paying fees for both. Um, thoughts on Bitcoin, we've talked about it already. If you want, I'm downloading this live. You can go watch it. I'll post it on YouTube later today. Uh, Ambitious says difference between VOO and SPLG. There is no difference. They are the exact same thing, the exact same holdings, the exact same growth, the exact same dividend. Um, roughly. The only difference is the fees and the cost per share. Um, what should beginner traders look for when evaluating companies to invest in? So you're throwing two different words. You're throwing, you're throwing traders and investing. So it depends on what kind of what you want to be. Are you, do you want to be a stock trader or do you want to be an investor? Investing is for long term, a year or more. Stock trading is under a year. Um, but I have to wrap this live up, but there are videos and playlists for both. On here and YouTube, there's a, a video on stock trading for beginners and investing for beginners. Ah, my views on Tesla. That's the third, the third one. We're keeping a tally on how many people ask about Tesla. Give me your advice on Ethereum. Um, no, um, I don't give advice. 
22 years old, where to invest, invest 7,000 aggressively? Ah, uh, aggressively, I would go more towards tech-based ETFs. You're 22, you have the time on your side to go heavy into higher risk. Not really risk so much as long, well, there's, there's short-term risk, but long-term reward. Uh, XLK, QQQM, VGT are all ETFs that are highly concentrated in technology. It doesn't mean to neglect the boring stuff. I promise you at 22, the best thing, the single best thing you can do is an S&P 500 index fund. Um, then a dividend based fund to start that compounding now. People at 22 say dividends are for my grandparents and they're for old people. But the old people who are living off their dividends now started buying them when they were 20. I promise you, it's the best move you'll make. After that, higher growth. Now you can skew it however you want. I'm not saying only one, only one, only one. Pick what, um, what you're more bullish about. So if you're more bullish about technology, you've got 7,000, 4,000 in technology and 1,500 in dividends and another 1,500 in growth. I don't know if that equals 7,000, but whatever it would be for you. All right, everybody. Ah, um, someone who I see here who is a regular. Oh, man, I lost it. Toady, are you still in here? No, nah, I got to scroll back and find her. I'm going to find her comment because I recognize her. Um, Toady Virtual. Yes, Toady. Uh, markets are dropping today because of CPI. It's Consumer Price Index. Uh, how much we're paying for things went up. Not great. Should have gone down. Um, so that's why the markets are dropping today. All right, everybody, I'm going to wrap this live up here. If I didn't answer your questions, I'm sorry. I go live every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday at 10 a.m. Sundays are jam-packed. Usually there's a 1,000 people in here. It's very busy. If I didn't answer your question, you can uh, leave a comment on one of my videos, or you can come back on Thursday at 10. Thanks for watching. I'm going to be reposting this video today on YouTube. Um, oh, we got a fourth question on Tesla. All right, so only four people asked about Tesla today. Usually it's like 10 or 11. What did I miss? Yeah, Sarah. Someone's asking about Sarah. Uh, you can turn off the Roomba. Oh, yeah. Sarah came in. She she crawled. She didn't want to walk past, so she got on the floor and crawled and, and grabbed it. Um, do you think SPY will go up? Yes, over long term, yes. Um, Devon is in here saying his NVIDIA stock is up big. Mine too. Tesla. Ah, another one. Five. I'm counting how many people ask about Tesla. Thoughts on Microsoft, I've already talked about it, so I'm gonna be posting this live later on my YouTube channel you can watch. All right, I'm all caught up. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good day. Um, I'll be back on Thursday. Every time, any time is a good time to buy SPLG. You're holding it for the next 30 years. No, I don't mentor people. All right, bye, everyone.